Yeah, 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 I know gnomes are really handy to have around in the garden to help you with your chores, but you know they're not the only choice out there for garden ornament. Let me show you what I mean. It's important to realize that garden ornament doesn't have to be expensive. Just get creative. For instance, here is a little metal sculpture of two hummingbirds in flight taking the nectar from flowers. As the wind blows, it moves. So it adds that extra element of movement in the garden. This was very affordable. And over here, I have a nod to the past. This is actually an overscaled version of an armillary sphere, sometimes called an astrolabe. These devices were designed, well, since the time of Copernicus to chart the heavenly bodies. This one moves, which is kind of fun. And it's the perfect focal point as you come around the corner and see this aspect of the garden. It arrests the eye and draws the eye to it. And then there are gourds. Why not try some gourds as garden ornament? You can grow them easily. Just look at these. They look like the pods of space aliens. Definitely something that will draw your attention and create comment from visitors. Now let's go look at something a little more serious. Now whatever you choose in your garden as garden ornament, you need to think about whether you're gonna see it up against a single plane, like against a hedge, or if you're gonna see it in the round. And I use this old urn as an example. It's a focal point at this part of the garden, at this juncture. Here I've got a very interesting architectural plant in it called a variegated agave, which gets larger and larger over time. It's the sort of thing that I have to move in in the winter. So you can imagine this urn without anything in it. During the winter, there's nothing in it, and it holds up very well. And of course, little dogs like Angel make a very good, mobile, and amusing garden ornament. Now let's take a look at something in the cast iron category. Now take a look at this old boy. This is a 19th century cast iron deer or stag. And what's lovely about him is that you can move him around. He's really heavy, he takes several people. But in the winter, I put him up on the front porch. Great for the holidays, put garlands and all kinds of things around him. And then during the growing season, I move him out. Here's a focal point for this lawn. You can see him from the house. Now this deer really pops, not just because of the flowers around it, but because we have this dark green hedge behind him. So he's light in color, the hedge is dark, you get the contrast, and it makes it even more of a focal point in the space. It's really the only kind of deer you want in your garden. He doesn't eat much. So remember the color of the object in the garden is really important if you want to get as much visual impact as possible. You also need to think about the size and scale of a piece of garden ornament or sculpture. For instance, in this garden, which is rarely long, or this lawn, I should say, I found this piece of sculpture, which I really love. It's a cast iron copy of a Greek goddess. So she's only this tall. So the idea was, how do I make her more visually accessible? The idea here was to put her on a plinth, which is just the word for something that supports a sculpture like this. And you can see I designed this plinth and had a friend create it, actually make it out of some pieces of stone. So what happens as she begins to rust or oxidize through the paint that was on her, it begins to spill down over this plinth and gives it a patina not unlike hers. So it all blends together. So the net effect is a much larger sculpture, which I needed. So when you're thinking about sculpture in the garden, dare to be big, bigger is better. Small things tend to get lost in the garden. Now, another thing that you can do is you can help direct attention to the sculpture, whether it's the right size or not. In this case, even though she's the right scale, I put her at the terminus or the end of this procession of eight wisteria trees, which directs the eye all the way down this lawn to her. You see, these are just a few examples of garden ornament in my garden. You can use anything you like, all sorts of modern sculpture, I love things like bright colored ceramic containers, as well as something as simple as a bird bath. Hey, if you've got some ideas on garden ornament for your garden, I'd love to hear about them. Just subscribe to eHow Home.